When Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning released back in 2012 so close to the release of Skyrim, it was sadly overlooked by many, resulting in poor sales figures, and thus the eventual shutting down of its developer, 38 Studios. The sequel MMO was then cancelled, and any hope of seeing this game in the future basically ended right then and there. Flash forward 8 years, and the game is getting another chance at life with Kingdoms of Amalur re-reckoning thanks to THQ Nordic, who has acquired the rights to the IP and has brought us this remaster. No doubt this game was remastered for hardcore fans of the original, like me, who have begged for a remaster or a sequel for years, but the game is also perfect for anybody that missed out on the original. Being a remaster, it of course includes all the game's previous DLCs, and even a brand new DLC coming early 2021 titled Fate Sworn, which is a very welcome surprise. Now the remaster isn't some grand overhaul with only minor improvements to graphics, but they did make a few quality of life changes that definitely improve the overall game experience, like an FOV slider, a proper hard mode difficulty, bug fixes, and fixing the leveling and progression issues found in the original. Some bugs still exist in the remaster, like some pop-in textures and camera issues during interactions with NPCs, but overall, the game looks and feels a lot smoother than the original. So what is Kingdoms of Amalur if you haven't played it before? Well, it's an open-world action RPG with deep class and character build crafting, addictive combat, a charming and beautiful world design and art style, and plenty of loot to go round. The game is massive, filled with quests, dungeons, villages, settlements, factions, and heaps of lore and world building material. I mean, just look at the size of this map, there's so much content in this game, you could easily be busy for hundreds of hours. But with my most recent playthrough, I managed to complete a fair bit of the side content, probably 30% of it, along with the main campaign in about 40 hours. So don't worry if the game looks too overwhelming, like there's too much content, because you can definitely experience a lot of it in 30 to 40 hours. But again, the potential for hundreds of hours is definitely there. And that's just the base game. The two DLCs included will provide 6 to 15 more hours of content each, but for this review, we're going to focus on just the base game. The game begins like many RPG games. You're a nameless, faceless character who having died before is revived by what's called the Well of Souls. After escaping the facility that's under siege, you learn from an old fate weaver that fate doesn't apply to you and you are a true example of free will and free choices. The world is destined to be destroyed, but because destiny and fate don't apply to you, you are the only one who can save the world from its fate. It's quite a hefty story set up being the savior of the world and all, but I think the setup is perfect. Being the fateless one allows for total freedom in the world of Amalur. Like I mentioned, the map is huge and the world known as the Feylands is divided into five separate areas. The massive forests of Dalantarth, the open plains of Arathel, the canyon territories of Detir, the swamps of Cloricon, and the crystal kingdom of Alabastra. Each area does a pretty good job of being distinct with its own enemy types and the style of the side content found in each zone. Sure, there are some similar side quest missions, but for the most part, side content was varied enough to keep me interested in picking up more side quests. One man may need you to find a business partner in a neighboring town only to learn that he has betrayed the man for selfish gains. A woman sends you to find her husband who hasn't returned from the war yet, and when you find him, it turns out he faked his death so he wouldn't have to return to her and other bigger quest lines like tracking down a spider queen responsible for the spider infestation throughout Dalantarth, or earning your seat in the House of Ballads by helping the Summer Phase. I'm genuinely impressed with the amount of dialogue and writing that went into each and every side quest, and the efforts to set one quest apart from the other. Are they super cinematic side missions in the same vein as something like The Witcher 3 side content? No, but they are much better than the side content found in recent Assassin's Creed titles that are basically fetch quests or go kill that group of guards. These missions here are much more interesting. There's plenty of incentive to do these missions too. Like I mentioned earlier, the game has tons of loot. Whether that be armor sets or various weapons or helpful items like charms and rings, the amount of loot is honestly pretty crazy. There are some seriously incredible gear items to be acquired or found in Amalur. And sure, some of the loot you find will be junk, but you are able to either deconstruct it for parts to craft your own weapons and armor, or you can sell the items and maybe earn enough to buy top dollar items from pricey vendors. And if you're like me who explores every nook and cranny and completes tons of side quests, making money becomes a little bit easy. 
which in turn makes the game a little bit easy in the later game, but the average player will definitely have a pretty healthy balance of money or crafting materials, I think. Now one of the most addictive parts of Amalur is using your loot in combat. You have so many options when it comes to weaponry that it's really hard to choose just two equipable ones at a time. You have great swords, long swords, hammers, daggers, fey blades, longbows, chakrams, staves, scepters, and they all have their uses and are very fun to use. For my most recent playthrough, I focused on great swords and chakrams. The weapons you use corresponds to which ability tree you level up. Might is for great swords, long swords, and hammers. Sorcery is for chakrams, staves, and scepters. And finesse is for longbows, fey blades, and daggers. So because I use chakrams and great swords, I put points into both might and sorcery for more of a battle mage character build throughout my playthrough. Each ability tree also does more for you than just to tune your weapon type. It also provides magic and spells. For might, you get hard hitting magic like ground pounding sharp rocks, and sorcery is for more casting spells like lightning bolts. But each ability tree has plenty of magic to choose from. Pairing your magic with your weapon attacks to create devastating combos is what MLR's combat is all about and what keeps it interesting from start to finish. Simply exploring the world of Amalur was another thing that kept me playing. The graphic and art style having obvious inspirations from games like Fable and World of Warcraft is what really drew me in. It's an art style that stays timeless in my eyes. Dalantarth and the Plains of Arathel are very much your comfortable fantasy settings and they honestly nailed it. From the villages and towns, to the races and the NPCs, it's almost a perfect fantasy RPG setting. The swamps of Clericon had me exploring and helping strangers throughout its gloomy atmosphere and ridding of monsters you'd expect to find in swampy marshes. The absolutely beautiful Crystal Kingdom of Alabastra begged to be explored and so I did, not missing a single cave, cavern, or hidden access point. The only area that wasn't really my cup of tea was Detir. Not that it was bad necessarily as I think it succeeded in doing what it set out to do, being an open desert wasteland, but just exploring the mines wasn't as exciting to me as exploring crystal caves or fey underworlds. Kingdoms of Amalur is a game that I think every person should play at least once. And with Re-Reckoning and a new DLC set to release early next year, I think now is a better time than any to hop in and play this timeless gem. Is it a masterpiece? Probably not, but it's definitely a must play for any fan of RPG games. But that's going to be it for this video guys, thank you so much for watching, leave a like on the video if you did enjoy, and let me know your thoughts on Kingdoms of Amalur in the comment section. I will see you all next time.